John Carter. I support the bill. I call the Honourable Shane Jones. Uh, Te Nākwe. Uh, sir, I have, to acknowledge the, I have to acknowledge the grand old man of Northland politics, Mr John Carter, and the shortness of his speech prepare, is, 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 is paving the way for him to go to Rarotonga next year, where members of the Golden Oldie rugby team may prevail upon him from time to time. Although I'd have to say, sir, that uh, other characters who have washed up on shores haven't actually enjoyed a long and fruitful life. So kia tūpato, Mr Carter. Of course, that's Mr Gilmore, sir, the man who wanders around Parliament humming, I've been there, man, I've been everywhere, man. And so that's his whole approach to his political contributions in this particular House. I'll tell you when he never does it, sir, is when Amy Adams gives him that withering look. <laughs> she gives him that withering look after she suffered suffered the bumbling, sir, of the uh, chair, Mr Foss, and then he freezes. She tried that look, sir, with Parekura Horumiya's cousin, Hekia Parata, and came off second best. That's why she's on the benches of Treasury, and Amy's gone back to give more of these uh, heartfelt speeches about Christchurch. That a level, you know, so the level of emotion where, the, where there's almost tears from the wreaths around this room, but she did absolutely nothing, sir, absolutely nothing in the context of her contributions to this bill to improve the prospects of the garden variety families down there, sir, into Waipounamu, around Ōtautahi, sir, to actually receive any meaningful benefit just before Christmas. So every time, sir, we hear from uh, Mr Aaron Gilmore, it's that DNA-based reminder he's trying to give everyone, please don't ditch me as, and, 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 and chuck me and jettison me out along with the Act members, who as a consequence, sir, during the time that we on this side of the House have been debating this bill have wandered around the country continuing to drive a racial wedge between uh, God-fearing, friendly New Zealanders. And they mistakenly think, sir, that while we're working on this arid topic, doing the job of the government because they're either too ill-informed or disinterested in earning their pay and making meaningful parliamentary contributions, they're wandering around. And sort of perversely enough, sir, uh, uh, the, the newest member of the uh, ACT Party, uh, Hilary Calvert, is going to wake up and realise that she's occupying a similar sleeping space as Hone Harawin. Well, so the level of extremism that they both bring, they deserve each other on that particular issue. But that's for another matter. Sir, this bill contains a host of issues that the Select Committee, in terms of our contribution to it, we were quite relaxed that they should be supported. And we got uh, sterling service there. Sir, from the uh, members of the, uh, uh, the policy unit out of the tax department, and uh, if memory serves me correctly, once or thrice we even had the sort of oracle, Mr Robin Oliver, I, and please spell that word in the right manner, uh, there's Robin Oliver, the, uh, the, the man who, who generally knows everything about tax law. So, so, well, yes, well, no, Helen Clark, uh, I recall Helen Clark saying that Robin not only knew everything, he was a great contributor when the government realised that as a consequence of entering into tax innovations, they needed a solution to actually rationalise it. And I think Mr Oliver probably did his greatest work with, uh, in relation to Mr Tony Gibbs's innovation. But, sir, a number of um, measures in this bill were designed as a contribution to simplify the administration of the GST system. Now, I won't repeat, sir, the fact that there was an opportunity to lessen the burden of GST on, the, uh, on our Kiwi families and their day-to-day -day toil. Uh, that was rejected. In addition, sir, there was an opportunity to explain to New Zealanders as a consequence of this uh, sudden burst of enthusiasm through an SOP why these additional changes were needed. So it fell to this side of the House. Uh, sir, as someone who grew up on a farm and uh, has owned a bit of land from time to time, there is some sense in what is proposed in relation to the zero rating. But what, uh, what, what really, sir, has blighted the discussions is that there was an unwillingness on that side of the House to stand and gradually take us as a full House through why a number of these changes were actually dropped in, in a virtual ambush fashion just before Christmas, sir, on the floor of the House. So um, this bill did pick up and um, paper over the mistakes of the Minister of Māori Affairs uh, several months ago, sir, when the other ch tax changes were made, there was an egregious omission reflective of the fact that there's great inattention and sleepiness over that side of the House. 
and they sir, ended up changing tax rates but forgot all about some of the most neediest New Zealanders, i.e. those Māori families that have rights and interests in Māori trusts. Now their tax rate, sir, should have been calibrated at that point in time. It was fixed up in the time that Labour was in power and that was a late contribution but nevertheless a useful contribution. Sir, it's, it, it's a shame that Tūruro Flavel actually made a decent rationalisation as to why he felt compelled to support this bill given that Rahui Katene had provided most of the verbal leadership, sir, on the bill, but she was now back in the seabed and foreshore issue where we understand, sir, she's preparing to abandon her party and actually vote on our side of the House. Uh, meetings are being held, sir, from Te Tauihu, from Te Tauihu, sir, right through to Waipounamu. She's under intense pressure this evening, sir, intense pressure, because she now realises that, sir, she will lose that seat. That's why she's not here this evening, sir, to fulfil her responsibilities in respect of tax policy or goodness knows what it was that she could say that would make much sense in relation to filling the vacuum that's been evident from that side of the House. But never mind, sir, our colleague, myself and my colleagues, in particular Mr Mallard, that, uh, that, 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 that stubborn campaigner, sir, he has ensured that not a single measure, sort of single measure or level of vacuum goes unattended in this House and in this debate. However, sir, the uh, Māori Party, they need to take a lesson that that particular omission on their part, it was fixed up by us, pay attention to the bread and butter issues, because that's what tax impacts. It impacts not only on the uh, lives of the corporate merchants, sir, it impacts on the lives of daily people. Do they have enough funds at the end of the week? Do they actually have the ability to live within their budget? And of course, many people, sir, as a consequence of failed tax policy, extended in many respects by that uh, rather rushed job of an SOP, are going to have a Christmas where they're going to be the casualties of a flawed tax policy, sir. They're actually going to have a very meagre range of goods in the uh, talking and the stocking of uh, Father Christmas. And as we go beyond this point in our debates about tax, sir, we can't wait until we move into the new year and continually remind New Zealanders, not that as a consequence of Jerry Brownlee's foolish management of the House, we're stuck here on a Friday evening, not that uh, members on the other side of the House are giving uh, frightfully short speeches because they're angry that Jerry Brownlee has actually trapped them here. No, so they're actually going to suffer because there has been a very impoverished view given by the government as to how fiscal policy ought to be used to improve the lives of New Zealanders. And, sir, nowhere was that seen more lucidly than recently by the, um, by, 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 by the Governor of the Reserve Bank, Dr Alan Bollard, where, sir, he said, don't place all the pressure on me as the architect of monetary policy. Blame those who hold the levers for fiscal policy. Well, sir, fiscal policy is tax policy. Fiscal policy is revenue policy. When you shrink your revenue, when it's frittered away and enjoyed by a narrow economic caste who already, sir, are able to pay their way and you remove from the pockets, you remove from the wallets of needy New Zealanders those precious cents and dollars, sir, you only make their Christmas and you make Sir, their summer break and indeed the year coming towards us a worse experience. But wait, help us on the way. So we have a host of very innovative and impressive policies that will address the ongoing failures of tax policy, in particular, sir, the perpetuation of privilege through, through nefarious structuring of property and other assets and indeed I was heard told today by Mr Cunliffe, recreational boats. So, so I'm very confident that the senior members of our team are bringing forward a set of policies that will enable New Zealanders to see there is going to be a de demonstrable change. There's going to be a new trajectory and as a consequence of it, New Zealanders will be more secure, the country will be more prosperous and they, sir, will be hold, held responsible for the poverty they're bringing through failed legislation such as this. Kia ora tato katoa. Speaker. Speaker. Call Chris Tremay.